All right, we get started with Georgia Tech. We have uh, Coach Michelle Joseph, Mitra Waltauer, Sidney Wallace, and Sasha Goodlett. Uh, Coach, if you could just start us off with an opening uh, statement about today's game. Well, first of all, I'm just uh, thrilled to death for my players um, and for the people at Georgia Tech. It's a long time, way overdue, um, Georgia Tech being in the Sweet 16. And for us to make history with this group of people, I'm, I'm very blessed to, to be surrounded by players that are committed to excellence, um, both on the floor and off the floor. Um, I have five seniors. All five of them are going to graduate this spring. All five of them have, have taken this program where it's never been before. And I'm just really um, – really happy for them. They deserve this. Um, they've worked extremely hard. And one of the things we talked about in the locker room before the game is that we've put a lot of in, the, in our bank. We had a lot stored up. And we paid the price to be successful. And that's why today we went out there and we were able to take away from, out of that bank account. And we had a lot stored up and we had a lot to, to give. You saw for 40 minutes, they executed the game plan to a T, offensively and defensively. We played several different lineups. Um, we played several different defenses. We from everything, every press we have to a triangle and two, to man, um, a lot of different defensive adjustments, and these guys were able to to put that together on the floor uh, for 40 minutes. And I thought you saw one of the things we talked about early in the season with these seniors was we were going to have to have great senior leadership and we're going to have to be resilient. And I thought tonight you saw their resiliency, and that's what this program and this and this team has stood for all season long. At this time, we'll open it up to questions for student athletes, Mike. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I just had the. Um, I just came out here with confidence, and I just know how to step up for my my senior uh, leaders, and you know, just play my role. Peter. Um, I mean, starting out the game, we wanted to attack the press. We know that Georgetown has a great, you know, full court press, and we were getting our shooters open, like the shooters were open. Then at the timeout, Coach came to me and was like, we got to get you touches. So that means you need to post, you need to seal, you need to be a presence. And from then on, my teammates got me the ball, and I finished. So. Um, I feel like it – yeah, I feel like it made them aware of the fact, like, you can't just go out on the shooters and deny, like, we also have an inside presence also. Um, just coming out, I was, you know, trying to get my shooters open, you know, trying to play my role, set great screens, you know, for um, Sydney because, you know, she was coming down. We already knew that that baseline was going to be wide open if I set the screen and we executed it well. So after they started playing off and started running out with her because she was making the shots, that's when I was like, all right, it's time for me to, like, put in my two cents so, you know, they can get back to opening her back up. Mike. So, Mitch, how, how good is it for your team when you can get the ball to Sasha? Oh, very good because, you know, um, she opens up stuff for our shooters. So when we get it to her and she's working in the inside, we know that we're going to be open and it's up to us to knock it down after that. And um, it makes our offense flow that much more. Thank you. Kip. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me about your offense on Sugar Rogers. It looked like you did a good job denying her open looks for the first 30 minutes. Well, yeah, we uh, came into the game. We wanted to throw a bunch of different looks at her defensively, and I think we did a great job of that. Uh, we wanted to deny her and just make it tough for her to even catch the ball, and I think it was a good team defensive effort. Jody. Um, guys, after the game, it seemed like the celebration was a little subdued. How do you balance the joy of getting to the Sweet 16 for the first time with knowing that Baylor's next in a couple of days? Well, uh, we know, you know, we've never been to the Sweet 16 before, so we want to celebrate, but this is not as far as we want to go. You know, we, we're here to play, and we're confident, and um, we know we're not done yet. Mike. For both you seniors, how special is this accomplishment to go to the regional for the first time? Oh, it's very special. Like I said, we, we've never been here before, but we set goals for ourselves, high goals for ourselves all year, and we worked hard. And um, it's great knowing that we, we finally got here. Um, it just feels, to pay you back off of that, it just feels great for the simple fact that, you know, coming in, ever since we came in, we wanted to do something special. We wanted to leave our mark on this program, like I said the other day. I mean, we came in, even in the preseason, after the season, but we came in thinking we have to make it to the Sweet 16. We have to take this program somewhere it's never been. We don't have any excuses. We have nine upperclassmen. We're the senior class. Like, we're not going to let this program drop. And instead of dropping, we wanted to elevate it, take it a step further. So I feel like tonight, the reason why 
we're celebrating so hard was because the fact that we had um, accomplished it. But we're not going to sit here and just be happy with it. I mean, yeah, we're going to celebrate. We're going to be happy for a moment. But tomorrow's a new day, and then we're going to get ready to go. We can open it up to questions for Coach Joseph Kip. Right. I think um, I mentioned that earlier is that they were so – all year long our team has been very zoned in to the game plans and, and to, especially on the defensive end. I think we've, we've talked several times that we built this program on defense and rebounding. And, you know, I think that's why over a four-year career these guys understand all the different defensive looks we're going to give different people. I think the most the thing that made us the most successful tonight we forced we took away her her left hand. Every we noticed the coaches were breaking down film. We noticed that everything she did was going to the left. And so when we were able to take away her left hand and force her to go right, she wasn't able to get as many shots off as she normally does. And I thought that our players did a great job in a 24-hour period being able to make that adjustment and come out and say, okay, we're going to always get on her left hand. And you know, again, we put a triangle and two in last week. Um, once we saw the brackets because we felt like, you know, hey, we, we may have to play Georgetown and, you know, we need to be prepared because one of our, our Achilles heels this year has been being able to stop a go-to player. And, um, you know, we think she's a lot like Raquana Williams at Miami and so we felt like we, we might need to use it. And tonight we used it on all side out of bounds plays and I really feel like that, that mixed up our, our fronts and our looks and I'm not sure, I think it kept Sugar off balance. Was that something you saw last year against Georgetown or just this year? As far as her left hand? Uh, just I saw it. I was watching film last night or two nights ago, and saw that you know just watched a lot all her clips that we had on her in six games, and I noticed that ninety percent of her shots were going left. Mike, we came into the program. Georgia Tech was a long ways away from being a kind of team that could be a top four, you know, first round by in the ACC tournament kind of thing. Did you know what you had when you got this recruiting class? Well, I knew it was special. It was ranked fifth in the country, and I knew it was a it was a it was an impact class. Um, and to have a point, a wing, and a post, and and have some size for the first time, because we were a six foot and under team uh, for our first two NCAA tournaments. And um, when we got this class, we got Sasha and Nisha and Chelsea. Uh, we got a lot of size inside, and um, I knew that we we had an opportunity to be special. At the time, we already had Alex Montgomery, who was the highest ranked recruit we ever had in the program. So we really felt like um, that was going to be a special class, and and you know the thing that I admire the most about these five seniors is they committed to each other to stay together for, for four years and and again the fact that they're all four going to graduate in four years from Georgia Tech is a major accomplishment. Peter. You're talking about Chelsea's role in today's game she really stepped up more than maybe might have been expected by men. Well Chelsea's always she's the heart and soul of our team I mean she's our energy uh, she's our toughness she's our energy She's our defensive stopper. Um, you know, she plays with a certain amount of toughness that you can't teach. And I really feel like she stepped out there today. And, and really, we asked her to be a, a chaser in our triangle and actually chase 14, the guard. And she's a post. And I really felt like she was able to do that and put some size on her. And it caused yeah, Sugar Rogers some, you know, some frustration when trying to shoot over somebody 6'2". But she couldn't do that if she didn't have the toughness. And Chelsea's, she's, she's an X factor for us. When Chelsea plays like she did today, we're pretty hard to beat. Mike, do you have one? Yeah, another one for Sasha. I was talking about how the team was six feet before you got there. What, what's the most important thing she told you to sell you on going to Georgia Tech? <laughs> <laughs> Run <Running> three miles. <laughs> <laughs> um, she didn't. That's the thing that made it so special, that made me think Georgia Tech was so special, was the fact that when she came in, she was all fired up, and she said, it's going to be hard. She was like, I'm not, the only thing that I can guarantee is that you'll get a degree in four years. And she was like, everything else you have to work and get yourself. While other coaches were saying how they would adjust to me, she was like, you have to adjust to this program. We need you. Like, you're a great post player. We would love to have you, but nothing's going to be given to you. You're not going to be spoon fed. You're going to have to go, um, come in and work and get everything for yourself. And after thinking long and hard about it, because there was a three mile involved, I decided. <laughs> I decided to come to Georgia Tech because I knew it would make me better in the end. And my mom was a huge factor in that. She told me, like, if you want to be the best, then you need to go to a school that presents the most challenge. And at that time, Georgia Tech was the school. So that's how I decided. Peter. Shooting 50% plus in a lot of games where you guys have been successful. 
Well, one of the reasons why we press and we press for 40 minutes and they've done it for four, you know, all the seniors have done it for four years. Everybody on this team's pressed their entire careers is because it's a wear down effect. You know, we may not, we not wear you down the first 10 minutes. We're going to wear you down the last 10 minutes of the game. And, you know, so our conditioning level has to be at a high level if we want to wear somebody down. And, you know, I think today both of us were probably concerned about the wear down effect because both of us were going to press for 40 minutes. Um, but you saw that, you know, Georgetown pulled back and went to some half court defense. Um, and that was good for us, you know, to see that. But um, I think the thing is, from num number one thing is that my team is bought in. They bought into our defensive system. And we go hard every day in practice. I tell them practices are going to be harder than a game. And that's one of the things that we just try to do. I push them, put them in situations in practice um, every single day so that they won't see anything worse in a game. They won't see anything tougher in a game. And, you know, we have a great strength coach and Scott McDonald. And, and these, these guys are on a, a, a year-round conditioning program. And we're committed. Um, we're, we want to give ourselves the opportunity to be the best we can be. Then we have to commit on a year-round conditioning program. But the three-mile run is for mental toughness. Um, you know, one of the things, I make every player run it in 28 minutes. The whole team has to run it together at 6 o'clock in the morning. They have to run it till they get it. And, um, you know, usually they all get it the first time. We've had a couple people that <laughs> took a couple more times. But... Um, <laughs> You know, it, it's just a mental thing, you know, and we've used it at times during games. Hey, if we can run three mile, we can do this. So, But today I didn't feel like they were tired. I felt like they were just, hey, they, they had their eyes on the prize. They knew what they wanted. They knew what they were here for, and fatigue was not going to get in our way today. That was not going to be a factor. Anyone else? All right. Thank, thank you, you, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.